In this video, we will discuss creating plan sheets. If you'd like to follow along with this video, please open the file 1501 creating plan sheets.dwg located in the training folder as discussed in the working with this dataset video. Civil 3D provides tools to automate sheet creation. In this video, we will focus on plan or plan and profile sheets. As with everything in Civil 3D, there are many styles and settings that pertain to plotting sheets. If we go to the settings tab and navigate to the view frame group, view frame and match line settings, these are the three that pertain to the sheet creation process. First, we have view frame groups, which just contain the commands to create the view frames as well as the sheets. And if you right click and go to edit command settings, these are simply the default settings that will be automatically placed into the dialog boxes when you run the commands. So if you wanna automate some of those settings, you can change so in here with either one of these commands. The view frame is an actual object that gets displayed within Civil 3D, and this will take on the size and scale of the viewport that will be used to generate your plan sheets. I'll double click the basic one, and it's simply a display for the view frame border. The match lines contain some additional settings. I'll go ahead and double click basic. And within the display tab, you define the lines as far as how the match lines will appear and what layer they'll go on, but also the match line mask, which will then be used to generate your mask in the areas where the match line should not plot to the next sheet. Note, you may need to actually change the color here to a slightly off-white color as I have found that using white in a layout will actually produce a black shading or hatching. So sometimes the off-white will actually work better for you. If you do require some sort of patterning, you can define that here as well. There are also label styles that are important to set as your match line labels will be the ones that you actually plot. So you wanna make sure you have the correct layout defined for your match lines based on your company standards or an agency that you might be following. Navigate to the Layout tab to change any of the different match line text that you want to appear within the sheet that you are going to plot. One of the other things you need to be aware of is that when you create plan or plan and profile sheets, you need to create a drawing template, a .dwt file, that has the correct settings for the viewports. Let's go ahead and open up our drawing template that we have for this project. Change your extension to .dwt and navigate to the C colon Civil 3D Projects Learning AutoCAD Civil 3D Infinite Skills Drawings folder, and then open up the Learning AutoCAD Civil 3D Infinite Skills .dwt file. Within this folder, I have a border with a title block. I also have two layouts here, one for cross sections and one for plan and profile. If I was plotting just plan sheets, I would have to create an additional layout that just contained the plan title block as well as the plan viewport. So what distinguishes a viewport that is a plan, profile, or section viewport from a standard AutoCAD viewport is when you select it here and navigate to the Properties palette, you will notice that on the bottom, there is a viewport type that you need to define. So undefined is standard AutoCAD viewports, and then we have the plan, profile, and section. This is crucial to creating your sheets as Civil 3D will look to these viewports to distinguish between which one to use for the plan or the profile. What is also contained within this title block are fields that will link to our sheet set file because Civil 3D leverages the sheet set manager functionality to automatically populate your title block information, which is really cool stuff. Let's close out our drawing template as you don't need it open to generate our view frames and sheets. So the first step in the process is to create view frames. To do so, simply navigate to the Output tab, Plan Production Panel, Create View Frames. In the Create View Frame wizard, you select your alignment and any station range that you may or may not want to plot. In this case, we only want to plot from station 300 to the end of our project. If you don't know it, you can select the Pick button right there and then navigate to the end of your project. I'll go a little bit farther past it to show some of the ending of the project. We'll click Next. Then you choose what type of sheet, plan and profile, plan only, profile only, and then this is where you define the template to actually use for the plan and profile sheet. I'll click the Navigate button, and then browse for that drawing template, and Civil 3D will return with a list of layouts 
that meet the criteria of those viewport definitions that we discussed earlier. I'll select OK. How do you want the view frame placements to be applied? Along the alignment, rotate to north. Do you want to set the view frame before the alignment to perhaps add some additional notes? I've set mine to 30. We'll click next. Then you can give it a name, so we'll call this one Proj-1. The name does not really matter that much. The view frame names, these two do not matter as they will not plot. We're not going to use these to plot. These are simply placeholders, so Civil3D knows where to actually plot the plan and profile locations. The style and the label style, where do you want them to be located? Top left typically works the best. We'll click Next. When Civil3D creates the view frames, do you want to snap to a specific value? Most probably you do, so either 10, 25, or 50, depending on your station ranges. Do you want to allow for additional distancing of repositioning in the areas where the view frames overlap? If you do not set this, you will not be able to reposition the view frames should you need to make any edits to them. Here's the style for the match lines, and then the left and right label styles as each one can be different. And then where you want the label line location, typically the alignment intersection is the best or middle for both sides. Click Next. Then what is your default profile views you want to use for these view frames? You can change them afterwards, as well as a band set style if you require a band set style to be applied to your profile views. I'll click Create View Frames. And there are our three view frames, one at the beginning of the alignment, the middle, and then we have one towards the end here. If we zoom in, you'll notice that we have the match lines at each location. This text that is listing the pounds will automatically use Sheet Set Manager to actually populate the sheet that is abutting this match line. If I select my view frame, you will notice some grips that appear should I need to make any edits to my view frame. I can actually rotate it if I need to. I can also select this diamond grip which will actually allow it to be moved along the alignment perpendicularly. You can also pick the square grip which will just physically move it to the location you want to move it to. Note you want to do these edits before you make your sheets, as once you create your sheets, you cannot go back. You will have to recreate the sheets if you change the view frames. However, you can recreate the sheets if you need to adjust your view frames afterwards. You can also adjust the match line. If I go ahead and select the match line, you'll notice that the match line has some grips as well. I can select this and move it. Notice how the match line will update automatically with the station value that it was moved to. Once you have your view frames created, you can now create your sheets. So let's click on the Create Sheets tool in the Plan Production panel of the Output tab, and you are prompted for the Create Sheets wizard. So first, I only have one view frame group, but of course you can have many within the file. So Civil3D has automatically selected the one from the list. You can select all your view frames, or simply a few from a selection. How do you want your layouts to be created? So do you want all layouts in one new drawing? all layouts in the current drawing, or a certain number of layouts per new drawing. I'll click all layouts in one new drawing, and I want the layout names to be RDWI dash the next counter, and I'm gonna click on this button here, which is the name template, to make sure that it starts at number one. Depending on if you've started creating sheets and you wanted to reproduce them, or you have a certain sheet number you wanna start at, you can change this right here. I'll click OK. The north arrow is coming from that drawing template that we talked about before. So you want to make sure you have a north arrow block that will automatically rotate to the correct rotation. Click Next. What's the name of the sheet set? So I'm going to call this one Projdes1. Notice how you can add this to an existing sheet set. So if you already happen to have a sheet set file that you created from the project previously, you could add this set of sheets to that sheet set file that would, let's say, already have those custom sheet set properties defined. Next, I'm going to define a sheet set storage location. I can browse for it but I can also simply type in here as well if I want to. So this will be the sheet set stores location. That's the DST file. And this will actually be the DWG files that get generated. Then what is the name of your layout? So this will be where the layouts exist in what drawing. I'll click Next. Then I can define the profile views, how they should be displayed. Notice how it's grabbing the default setting that was defined before. I can also select a default profile view within my drawing to grab the settings from there. Or I can go to the Choose Settings option here and select Profile View Wizard. Then I can go in here and define different settings. For instance, when I go to the Profile Display options, 
Sometimes the labels get set to complete label sets for all your profiles. So I'm going to go into here and set this to no labels as I do not want my existing ground or any of the other profiles except for my proposed vertical profile to be displayed with labels. What pipe networks do you want to be turned on? I'll select my existing and my proposed. Click next. And then what data bands do you want to be applied to your profile view? And then I'm not going to click next on the rest of these because I do not have any hatching or multiple plot options. Select finish. And then click next again. And now you can actually define some data references. So let's say the file that you're going to create, which is your plot file, you want to actually add some more labels to, let's say, the existing ground surface or the proposed ground surface. You can toggle these on and it will automatically add data shortcuts to these different objects. For some of the objects, you have to create data shortcuts or you will not be able to generate your profiles and profile views. I also, let's say, want to create a data shortcut to my pipe networks because I might want to add some pipe network annotation within that file. So I need these to be referenced into the file as data shortcut. If you happen to have labels already defined in this file, it would actually copy those pipe network labels to the new drawing. I do not have any, so I'm going to just toggle this off and I'll click on Create Sheets. You are prompted to save your file as Civil 3D needs to save the file before it can create the sheets from this file. So what Civil 3D is about to do, as soon as I define the profile view origin in my drawing is, it will save this file, and then it will actually reference in this file with all the other files that may be referenced in this file into the new file, and then it will copy all of the styles and settings necessary to generate my plan and profile sheets. Now, when you place your profile view origin, you do not want to click somewhere within your design as this is the location that will be referenced. So your best bet is to actually go far away from your design and click in drawing. Notice how it's copying the styles and settings and using the drawing template to actually create and generate the sheets. Now what immediately happens is Sheets Set Manager appears and will immediately open the DST file that we just created. So if you want to navigate to these files, simply double click here. This will open up the drawing with the layout that you just double clicked active. And as I always say, the plan creation tools provided by Civil 3D get you about 85% there. After that, you will have to make some minor edits. So for instance here, just to give you an example, you'll notice that my profile view is not displaying my band, and I also have some layers that are thawed and so on. So if I go back to my model space, remember all that it did was it referenced in the file that we were in to create these sheets, and it put profile views here with data shortcuts to all these different objects, all right? So now what we wanna do is we would have to use the layer freeze command. So I'll go to the home tab, layer freeze, and you could freeze the different layers that you may or may not want turned on. So you'll have to do that kind of stuff. And then of course, if you need to edit any of the different properties or profile view settings here, you can simply select this profile view because it does live in this file. Again, all the data that's showing within here is data shortcutted in. And I can go to the profile view properties. And what you can do is then just define your elevation change. So let's say I want to adjust this to 85. Click OK. Notice how it automatically readjusts the profile view. And then of course, if I need to add any additional notes or anything like that, I could do so as well. Just so you know, sometimes you will need to do a regen all to regenerate the data so it pops down to the locations where they are supposed to be at. And if I need to, let's say, modify this, I can of course do that as well. Here, I can simply drag this out. That will drag the label. So any of these kind of minor edits, you will still need to do. Again, it gets you about 85% there. Let me go back to my roadway one layout and you'll notice that I do need to adjust this so I can simply double click inside here. Civil 3D automatically locks the viewport but you can simply unlock it and without zooming I can simply pan to get my viewport where I needed to. For the most part the sheet creation process is very automated and saves you a ton of time. So if you'd like to see where the DST files and plot files are located, if we go to the C colon Civil 3D projects Learning AutoCAD Civil 3 Infinite Skills, Drawings, and Sheets subfolder, you'll see here are the locations for where the actual DST and the DWG file were created based upon the folder locations that we defined when we created them.